Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about uh, how to use auto layout in Figma, which is a new feature which uh, essentially is going to enable you to create uh, responsive components in no time. And you can leverage it for all sorts of different uh, elements inside your UI kits, uh, design systems uh, or design projects. Now we're going to use uh, a Big Sur UI kit from LS Graphics, which you can download for free so you can follow along very easily. So I'm going to go inside the components view and I created this new section. But before we do that, I want to show you the basic gist of auto layout. So over here, we have these three elements, which we're going to bring down here and let's zoom in in order to understand these concepts in a fast and efficient way. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're going to select both the text field and also the background element which contains this form input we're going to go over here on the right and click on the auto layout plus button now as you can see things changed and we also have the icon still but we need to bring it up and what we're going to do is we're going to literally drag it and drop it using the left mouse button inside this new frame which has been created and this new frame if you have a look it's essentially going to have these two rectangles and this essentially shows us that we have the auto layout activated now this frame works almost like every other other frame but the only difference is that we actually have the auto layout in this one so for example if we drag and drop the icon uh, just below the text field, you can see how the position changed. And uh, one important thing when it comes to the auto layout is the fact that uh, this uh, containing frame uh, is essentially going to dictate uh, the behavior of all the elements uh, inside of it. So it's similar to the concepts of Flexbox in uh, CSS, if you're familiar with that. And uh, you can uh, essentially find all of the options right here. So for example, the very first one is uh, if you want to stack it horizontally or in a vertical direction. So as you can see, as we change this, uh, the direction of the layout is going to change. In this case, we want to keep it horizontal since it's an input field. And over here, the second option is going to be the spacing between uh, the elements uh, within this frame. So as you can see that as we increase uh, or decrease the value, that's going to change. Now over here, instead we have uh, the padding and it's going to be really easy to change uh, directly if we click uh, on this icon, which uh, is going to open up uh, this uh, menu where we can essentially pick and choose the alignment. So for example, over here, we can uh, align it left, align it center or, you know, wherever we want really. And we can dictate the padding. So as you can see over here, we have a lot of padding, but we want to reduce it. So let's just double click on this one and let's uh, reduce the padding to only a value of five. And there we go. We can also do the same over here. And as you can see, the button shrinks uh, pretty much automatically. Now, if you click on the auto layout again, and we just uh, bring the width uh, and make it bigger, you can see how all of these behaviors start to make uh, even more sense since we have uh, all of these uh, different elements. Uh, so we can modify the alignment to left aligned, right aligned, top, uh, bottom or center, or even in the corners. So that's uh, something that we want to keep in mind. And uh, we can also see that we have this option as packed or space in between. And this is going to really make uh, a difference in some instances, because if we use a space in between, uh, it's essentially going to add more space. And we're going to see in just a moment how we can uh, leverage this uh, in a real life project. So let's move on uh, over here to the menu items. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to select uh, two of them and uh, we're going to add the auto layout. As you can see, we have the frame again. So I'm going to go ahead uh, over here and select uh, all of these uh, other elements. And uh, I'm just uh, going to drag and drop with the left mouse button. So we have uh, all of these elements uh, right here. Cool. So far, so good. And the, now what we want to actually try is to see if the auto layout is working. But as you can see, we have an issue. 
First of all, there is a, a new auto layout version available. So we simply have to click on update and we are in business. But as we try and modify the frame again, we're still having the issue. We're not uh, having the elements behaving as we desire. So what we're gonna do is we're going to use a space between uh, and uh, let's uh, see how this is working. Now it's uh, pretty much uh, working perfectly. So as you can see, you can uh, use the outer layout for creating uh, uh, things like this uh, in a very uh, quick and easy way. So again, uh, another example. Now, one of the most common uh, patterns which, uh, with which you're going to use auto layout is uh, usually with buttons. So similarly to what we already tried out, uh, we're simply going to apply the auto layout to this button. And as you can see, as we start typing, we're going to have a responsive button so we don't have to go inside each and every text layer and the background and essentially change them automatically. And this is going to save a lot of time during the design process. And again, we don't want to have a lot of padding on the left and right side. It's going to be very easy to change since we just have to go over here, adjust it to values such as 16 and we're pretty much good to go. So we can create uh, buttons uh, in a very short amount of time with uh, auto layout. Uh, and uh, it's just going to be a breeze, especially if you set it up in a design system. Now let's uh, have a look at another example, which uh, is uh, something which you would usually find, uh, for example, in dashboard UI elements uh, and components. Uh, and uh, over here, we're going to apply the same principles. So let's select uh, just two of these elements and then we're going to select uh, also all of these other elements and put it inside the outer layout. So as you can see by default uh, we're having a uh, um, small issue which we can solve in uh, just a few clicks. So the very first one is that we want to have all of the text uh, aligned uh, in the center. So that's an easy fix since so we can simply go here and adjust it. And now let's see if uh, the uh, auto layout is uh, uh, basically behaving as we want. Uh, and uh, ideally I want a different uh, layout over here. So we're going to use the space between element uh, once again. And as you can see now, this uh, is going to work uh, pretty fine. Now let's say that we want to have uh, some, extra, um, some extra distance over here. We can essentially, or some extra padding, I might say, we can simply go over here and add the padding and that's essentially going to enable us to tweak uh, this uh, design uh, as we wish uh, and uh, create all sorts of different uh, elements such as cards, uh, UI components and much, much more. So I hope you enjoyed this video on uh, how to lay out. If it was useful, please leave uh, a like. And on my channel, I have over 400 videos on UI UX design, showing my over eight years of experience. So feel free to check it out and I'll see you in the next video.